Reverberate 3 sounds fantastic. It's endlessly flexible, but that does come at a cost, and that cost is complexity. There's a lot going on here, and the difference between being productive and struggling is, is knowing the interface. It's easy once you know what you're looking at, but there is an awful lot to look at here. Now, if you're one of those people who just want to dial up a preset and just carry on with your day, then well, actually I'd say just get 7th Heaven because that's exactly what that does, and that sounds wonderful too. But you can't tweak this one very much. If you want to tweak then uh, it's not an either-or choice. Reverberate 3 is a great choice, and if you don't want to use all of these extra facilities that are in there and you just want to dial up a preset, you can totally do that. Let's put this away, simplify things a little, and if you just want to pull up a preset, just come up here, find one. Here I'm going to get uh, Lexicon 48, which is what these are. I'm going to get a hall, and I'm going to come down here and I'll pull up a medium hall. And that's exactly what we're going to have. I take a breath Sounds lovely. Right, bit long. So I'm going to pull it back a little. Rather than a time, I'm going to use stretch. It's a bit better. A little bit of pre-delay as well, maybe. That wasn't significantly harder than any other reverb you've ever used. But there's virtually no limit to where you stop with this just because well we've got two reverb engines that's the important thing to understand here so while you're getting to know this there are lots and lots of tabs but they're all duplicated twice it's important to know which reverb engine you're looking at because you might only be using reverb engine one and tweaking reverb engine two that's why nothing's happening something i'd recommend if you're going to show something down here by default it shows the ir waveform which is really useful you can see exactly what's happening but while you're getting to know it show metering and then it'll be very clear which reverb engine you're using, both either all or perhaps none. So here's reverb engine one and here's reverb engine two. And we've got all the same stuff twice. Now you'll notice that these tabs across the top change. Elements of the UI will change depending on exactly which IR you've got loaded in each reverb engine. And that, that's why. You'll see here we've got a Sim TS. We don't need to worry about what this is right now, whereas over here we don't. That's normal. So across the top here, we have reverberation times two. Next tab along the top, we've got effects times three for reverb one, for reverb two, and a master effects for both. For the delays, here we've got the same happening across the top, so everything three times, and the chorus as well, again, three times. This is why it's so important to know which reverb engine you're looking at, or the master. Mix, not quite as complicated there. We've just got two different options here because this is where we can see here we're using Reverb 1. We're not using Reverb 2 because it's switched off. That's how you switch it on. And you can blend between the two, set wet-dry levels, pan them, etc. We've also got modulation for the two Reverb Engine outputs. So already an awful lot packed into just the top third of this. Down here at the bottom, what we've got is we've got the IR waveform, EQ display, routing, and metering, as I said, but there's also an extra section that can pop along the bottom, which is either a file browser or a preset bank. So we can go from nice and simple to actually rather complex. Now, I'd say if you're going to use this bottom section, the preset bank is a useful way to go around and, and check out all of the included content that comes with Reverberate 3. It's kind of easier than up here. If you want to get into loading specific impulse responses into specific reverb engines, then you do that from this section here by clicking Load IR, and then you can come in there and do whatever it is you need to do. So there's a quick tour of the user interface of Reverberate 3 and some advice on how to navigate it successfully and not to get lost in what is actually quite a complex interface for pretty sophisticated plugin. So come back next time when we'll start to create some patches.